Do you believe that all of these people, as is the paranoid narrative that Steven Crowder is presenting, are working maybe in, in collusion with big tech to try to destroy him? Or, or do you believe it's plausible that Steven Crowder is just a monster? So I don't think that I've ever landed on the same side of an issue as Candace Owens. I mean, maybe her and I agree that ice cream is delicious or something like that. But in terms of like political issues or issues with regard to social commentary, I don't think we've ever agreed. But I guess even a broken clock is right twice a day because specifically with regard to the Steven Crowder issue, Candace Owens is making a lot of sense. She's making some really good points. And she kind of has a right to be angry at Steven Crowder since he accused her of extortion, and she is, but despite whatever biases she already has, in this video that we're about to watch, she's gonna make a really solid case for Steven Crowder's cancellation, and every single word she says here is correct, which pains me to say because complimenting her is uh it, it just it makes me feel almost physically ill because she's wrong on like 99.9% .9 of the issues but objectively speaking Candace Owens here is spot on and I think that what she specifically has to say about this issue is important because you've probably heard leftists like myself make the same argument that she's going to make here but Steven Crowder's fans aren't going to listen to woke leftists like myself who've been trying to cancel Crowder for years uh, because, you know, we don't have the legitimacy in their eyes that Candace Owens has, but they might listen to a fellow conservative like Candace Owens. So that's why I think that her saying what she's saying here is important. Well, again, going back to the pattern, it's not just the Daily Wire. It's David Landau. It's Sven the Computer. It's Jared Monroe, formerly known as Not Gay Jared, people that are locked into NDAs and are not allowed to speak about the abuse that they endured by Stephen Crowder. It's Owen Benjamin. It's now his wife. Do you believe that all of these various different parties, the majority of them who have never spoken to each other, I've never spoken Sven the Computer. I've never spoken to David Landau. I've never spoken to Hillary Crowder. I've never spoken to Owen Benjamin. Do you believe that all of these people, as is the paranoid narrative that Stephen Crowder is presenting, are working maybe in, in collusion with big tech to try to destroy him? Or, or do you believe it's plausible that Stephen Crowder is just a monster? I personally believe that he is a monster. And that is, by the way, Stephen, if you're watching, I'm not trying to extort you. I am just simply telling the truth. There was a lot of things that are going on, and I am glad that his wife found the strength to speak out, and I am calling upon everybody to roundly condemn this, to, to reject this firmly, not to somehow come up with an excuse and say, oh, well, it's a divorce, so we shouldn't talk about it. We should mind our own business. No, the way that we represent ourselves privately and publicly should be the same. The same. If you purport to care about family values, again, then you should care about this situation, and you should condemn it. I never thought that I'd say this, but um, Candace Owens is absolutely correct. I almost vomited saying it. I'm being melodramatic, of course. No, what she said there is correct. I think it's common sense, honestly. And if you're unfamiliar with the people that she referenced in that video, like Dave Landau, Owen Benjamin, and Not Gay Jared, who currently can't speak because he's under an NDA, uh, I will link you to the videos that I did about them. We went over their criticisms um, over the weekend, so you can watch that. I'm not going to rehash that now. But basically, long story short, his ex-employees are detailing his abusive behavior, detailing instances where Steven Crowder made them feel uncomfortable, do things that make them feel uncomfortable. And I think that what they say matters because they know Steven Crowder more than anyone. They know his behavior more than anyone, and they have nothing to gain by condemning Crowder and everything to lose by speaking out against somebody with a massive platform and a lot of clout in their circles. But as Candace Owens puts it, you know, what's more plausible here? Because he's trying to make it seem as if this is some sort of a coordinated smear campaign by big tech to shut him down. But like, think about this. Is it plausible that this is big tech trying to shut him down or woke leftists trying to cancel him or just that he's a shitty person. Like what's more likely in this situation and to have Candace Owens simplify the issue and put it bluntly like that. I hope it lands. I hope that some right wingers are going to turn away from them, uh, from him. I'd love that they turn away from her as well. But I mean, sometimes if the trash takes out itself and you have 
fascists sniping at other fascists, then, you know, at the end of the day, I think that's a net good for society. But if you think that it's really just like this big tech campaign to censor Steven Crowder, you're probably just a Steven Crowder simp. And if you're not experiencing cognitive dissonance, you're either dumb or a shitty person yourself. Now, on Twitter, Candace Owens talked about this a little bit more, and she responded to the abuse of his wife by implying that conservatives should be consistent on this issue, writing, if this were Alec Baldwin caught on camera, every person in conservative media would condemn this and play it on repeat. Telling your eight-month pregnant wife that you are going to, quote, fuck her up is the behavior of monsters. There's no justification. Change my mind. Now, she later added, lastly, as a rule, I do not believe that private recordings should be released, but for a man who quite literally released a private recording of his, quote, friend so he could scam people into supporting his new platform, I'm going to have to applaud the cosmic justice of it all. Now, in case you don't know, that last paragraph was a reference to Crowder secretly recording a phone call that he had with the Daily Wire, I believe Jeremy Boring specifically, um, and he would eventually use that phone call against the Daily Wire after they insulted him because uh, they only offered him a 50 million dollar contract i mean god can you imagine only being offered 50 million dollars over four years how would anyone survive yeah so i mean he little by little is exposing himself as a miserable piece of shit now since the lines have kind of been drawn you have some conservatives taking a side mike cernovich being one of them who's on team candace writing on twitter conservatives saying it's inappropriate to discuss crowder's divorce yes that is what his ex-wife's lawyers asked crowder to do instead he made a video blaming his soon-to-be ex-wife for the divorce and used an old candace clip to create drama now no one can talk oh shut up yeah, and you have another conservative who has never been right about anything in his life, noting how the right is um, basically trying to shut down this conversation by saying, oh, well, isn't this inappropriate to talk about this personal issue? Dude, he talked about his divorce. He's trying to monetize his divorce for views and clicks and rally the troops to get support on his side. I mean, there's nothing too low for Crowder. He's done it all. Targeted harassment, hate speech. He reenacted George Floyd's death to prove that it wasn't murder. I mean, this man is a fucking monster, not just because of this issue as well, but it's nice to see that conservatives are waking up and realizing, oh, okay, maybe he is a bad person. I mean, I'd love for the viewers of these conservatives to realize that they're all bad people. But I mean, if we can get one of them to be canceled by conservatives, that'd be great. And Steven Crowder is kind of in a bad position here because he's burned a lot of bridges with right wing propagandists who have very large platforms who would otherwise likely rush to his defense had he not instigated beef with them for views and clicks. But because he's desperate, well, he decided to start shit with them and uh, monetize it maybe have more leverage going into his negotiations with rumble i don't know like i don't know what makes him tick specifically but what's clear is that he's a bad person and conservatives really should um they should hold themselves to a higher standard right i know that they're not morally consistent i know that they're oftentimes super hypocritical but if you claim to care about family values then it is deeply inconsistent to still watch and support someone who threatens to fuck up his pregnant wife. Like, I get that, like, barking orders at your wife is kind of part of the trad con ethos, but, like, threatening physical violence, are you okay with this? Because if you continue to watch Steven Crowder, you kind of are, right? But, I mean, look. I don't think that Steven Crowder's fans are going to listen to me, but hopefully they listen to people like Candace Owens who are saying what's pretty obvious. The man is a piece of shit. The man is a monster and good people should not support people who do that to their loved ones.